to go to Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Yeah. Hello and welcome to uh, Business as Unusual. My name is Megan, I'm from Greater London Properties. Um, just to give a little bit of an introduction to those that are tuning on for, uh, for the first time ever today, um, Greater London Properties set up a Facebook group called Central London's Lockdown Support Group. This is mainly a group to provide a platform for those businesses during lockdown. Um, what's really good is we've recently seen that there are quite a lot of businesses that are beginning to reopen, uh, mainly kind of for takeaways or, or just to do what they can uh, during the kind of release of some restrictions. Um, so just keep, keep posting on there, let the community know uh, what is reopening, that would be really great. Um, we've been doing these live chats now um, for several weeks. Um, this is actually number 19, I believe. Um, it's crazy. Um, but we've been uh, here to meet the people behind those businesses. Um, just mainly to give tips, tricks and motivation uh, to the people at home uh, that can tune in and watch. Um, but as it's Mental Health Awareness Week this week, um, we focused it um, around this and we're speaking to uh, Brandon Hepburn, who is a personal trainer. Um, he can often be found at Gym Box in on St. Martin's Lane in Con Garden, um, but also at the moment, obviously, due to the lockdown restrictions, he's uh, really available online. Um, Brandon. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us here today. No worries. Um, I know that obviously um, you, you do have quite a large following um, online and obviously you have quite a lot of clients in Gymbox as well, but we really want to want to hear kind of how you got started. Um, have you always been in fitness? Yeah, my family have always been athletic. Um, so it kind of was just, we're always outdoors, we're always active, we're always doing something. So I kind of just naturally fell into it. Um, and then kind of from the age of probably like 11, I was playing like rugby at a good level. And then I fell into another sport, which was kayaking and kind of the two, I ha kind of had to pick one. Um, so I decided to go with kayaking, which is a very unique sport for most. Um, ended up doing very well. I competed for Great Britain for oh, wow. six or seven years, potentially from 14 all the way up until like 18, 19. Um, I got to travel the world, compete at world championships, European championships, and then I just lost the spark for it. Um, I just I just lost that oomph that I had before. Mm. Um, I was working with a supplement company at the time and they asked me to come and do a photo shoot just for website updates and things like that. Um, went there with the other athletes and they were all trainers. And I was like, oh, okay, like maybe I should do this because you get to work out and it's cool. You get to do what you love. And that was it. And that was literally how I fell into coaching, um, into one-to-one -one coaching, and the rest was really history. And then I fell in love with, like, the bodybuilding route, so competing on stage and things like that. So I was supposed to compete this year, but obviously plans have changed. So of course, re rescheduling for next year, but that's it. So my journey continues as everyone else's. Oh, I, I love kayaking. I've got my one star. <laughs> That's all, though. <laughs> it's really tough. It's good for your upper arms, isn't it? Blink and neck. Um, but uh, that's brilliant though is at least you can do more training in the meantime so that you can you can win the bodybuilding uh competition you can... yeah, yeah. We've, we've been we've been we've been given more time i think that's the way people got to see us i've got an extra year now so it's only gonna be better exactly that's brilliant um how have you found lockdown like have you found that you've been receiving more clients uh first probably three weeks it was horrific um especially when gym closed, that was, people can, re people can relate, like, like people, I think people assume, oh, it's just the gym. But I'm like, for me, that was where I worked. That is where my friends were. That was my life. That's where I spent 14, 16 hours a day uh, for the last four, five, six years of my life sort of thing. Um, so having that taken away was very much like, well, what, what do I do? Like I am lost, fully lost. Um, so the first three weeks I was very anxious. Uh, anxiety was high. Um, yeah, just all over the place. Like it wasn't nice. And I think everyone, regardless what you do, felt in the same sort of situation. Um, and then from there, it's like, well, I've got to be responsible for people. I'm responsible for people's health, um, their mental health. So I'm like, right, I just need to like, right, I need to step up and support people. Um, and then since then, yeah, online business has grown massively, which is great. 
Um, obviously, I'm still working with one-to-one -one clients who are at Gymbox, um, just on an online basis, really, just making sure we're staying on top of our nutrition, our exercise, our health, our mindsets. Um, so it's it's been good. It has been good. The first three weeks, nah, it was horrible. Um, but after that, yeah. it's kind of all fallen into place. And I think most people now are like, it's almost like the new norm. I really like hearing that perspective, actually, because it is, you know, you don't realise, um, obviously, because I, I do I do go to a gym, but I wasn't like an avid gym goer. But it, it, it was a big impact um, when when gyms closed. So it is really good to hear that perspective. Um, I wanted to touch on it just because uh, before we kind of get into the rest, um, just in case uh, when, when the gyms start reopening, like when gym box opens again, um, as you are kind of a main personal trainer within gym box, do people have to have a membership at Gymbox in order to uh, use you um, like on a one-to-one -one basis? Um, if you want to use the gym on a regular basis, you can get a gym membership, and I recommend you to get a gym membership. If you just want to see me for coaching once, twice a week, and you're using, I don't know, another gym somewhere else, uh, no, you don't. I'll just pay half your like your day pass. So if a day pass was £20, for example, I would pay £10 of that. You'd pay the other 10 and then you train, do your solo sessions that I would program for you at your home gym sort of thing. So no, you don't have to be. It's absolutely, it's flexible in that sense, yeah. That's good, because obviously, um, as you've kind of gained more online followers with everything that you've been doing in the background, they might want to then see you in one-to-one. -one. So um, it's good to good to give them that option, really. Yeah, that's um, it. Go on, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I always talk over people, so I have to, I have to shut up sometimes. No, no, go for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also um so what what i really in what i really liked um kind of getting to know uh, you online and everything like this is you've um, you've actually created some online free like ebooks so tell us more about those yes yeah, so I, I release kind of like recipe books um workout plans home workout plans purely to help more people really um because obviously especially one-to-one -one coaching that is a very it's a premium service at the end of the day it is, it is a luxury item and not many people can afford one-to-one -one coaching. So I kind of just wanted something that was free that could help people achieve or give them a kickstart into what they want to achieve, really. Um, that was literally the basics behind it, really. Like, kind of given my aspect on training, my thoughts on nutrition, I was like, cool, let's just chuck this out there for people to download, use, things like that. Um, and it's had great response. I've had thousands of downloads off it and yeah, it's, it's, people seem to enjoy it and love it. That's the main thing for me. It's like, sit, sit. And I talk to these people and things like that. They send me messages like, oh, cool. I've like dropped five pounds in like three weeks. I'm like, sick. It's cool. It's brilliant. That's brilliant. And I, I, beforehand, before this live, actually, I was on it and I was like, oh, we need to click download. <laughs> so I think it will be quite a few more after this because like, it's just, um, it's easy now that we've uh, we've we've been on our social media so much during lockdown because it's just a go-to thing. Um, it's quite nice that you can download something and have that away. You know, like once you've downloaded it, you can then you know rather than keep being distracted, you can have something to focus on that you keep going back to. That's that's not social media, I guess. Yeah, um, and yeah. It's nice to take that break away from it for sure. And also, um, just with regards to the recipe book, because um, sometimes it's hard, you know, like when you're trying to diet and everything like this, it's, it's hard to be uh, like inspirational with with what to eat. So you know how people can say, um, you know, oh, you need to sort out a meal plan or you need to you don't eat this and don't eat this. And then you're trying to think, well, if I don't have that in my diet, then what do I eat? Um, <laughs> so the recipe book is, is a really good, uh, really good way of, of kind of influencing people to do that, I think. Yeah, I think as well, people, it's, it's another one of those myths again, people say this is bad or this is good. And they define food as good and bad. And this is healthy. And this is this is skinny food. And this is fattening food and things like that. I'm like, any food has a calorie, whatever you consume, that gives you energy has a calorie. So regardless of that, it's broccoli. Yes, broccoli has calories. It's good for you. It has calories. <laughs> so what it is, it's about my mission is always to educate people to teach them how to drop body fat so they never have to drop body fat again. That's the mission. So it's all good coaching someone, but it's very different to educate someone. So if someone said, like, is this food bad for me? I'm like, no, but it's a lot of calories. Like you might want to try an alternative, for example. And it's, it's that simple. It is, it's about, I think the easiest way to put it is like 80, 20, 
So there's this rule, 80% of your foods is good whole foods, good nutrition, good micronutrients. The other 20%, I'm like, have a cake, like have a, have a vodka soda, I don't know, whatever you want to do. Like it's absolutely fine because you can't assume the rest of your life you're going to go without having a night out, going out for dinner, all this sort of stuff. It's So it's about making health and fitness a part of your life, not the other way around. Yeah, I like that because you can become so consumed with it that you just think, no, I can't drink, no, I can't live my life. It's either fitness yeah. or living life. Yeah. Um, and then, <laughs> and that's when that yo-yo cycle comes in. You'll gain loads of weight, you'll drop it all off, and that's in a sense what ninety-nine point nine percent of diets out there say. It's 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 a diet. They want to get the quick results and the quick fixes, but then they're not educating for the rest of your life for the next 40, 50, 60 years. So, yeah, that's just yeah. that's my opinion on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that opinion. Okay. It's a it's a much better opinion for me. Um, with um, obviously, with it being Mental Health Awareness Week, um, how do you think that fitness kind of impacts mental health? I think from ground one, I think we all know the benefits of fitness. It's a stress relief. It's that escape from potentially the world that you live in normally it's your chance to release different hormones to like create endorphins to kind of have that good like feel good feeling um 100 fitness is it's it's up there it's up there for mental health um but i think this is when it comes on to like the motivational side of things like, like you won't be motivated every single day and that's absolutely fine and it's it's fine to feel like crap as well like we have days where we feel we feel we feel crappy it's absolutely fine so almost just accept that's a time period and then the most important thing about motivation is personally i don't i don't fully believe in motivation as crazy as that sounds i don't fully believe in it because if you need to be motivated or something all the time that means your vision or your goal isn't clear enough to you so if your goal is to drop body fat but then you feel like you need motivational time i'm like maybe this goal isn't the right thing for you maybe we need to reassess your why and your vision of how you want to look and feel, then every day you wake up and be like, okay, cool, I can see, I can see a clearer path in front of me now. I really like that because um, that that that's really that's really true actually because um, it it all depends on kind of like it with goals. I always say that they have to be kind of time bound as well, um, but also very kind of uh, focused, like a focused vision. Yeah. Um, so yeah, don't think my vision is uh, focused enough. <laughs> No, that's it. I think as well, people are people just overcomplicate it as well. And as well, it's just like if your goal was like lockdown's a perfect time period for that. Like, so for example, if you say gyms might be open in eight to ten weeks' time, so let's look at end of July, maybe August time, sort of thing. So, like, okay, what are we going to do in the next eight to ten weeks to achieve your goal? So we are in control of everything right now. The only thing you can't control is a gym, but we can still control your workouts, your intensity, your nutrition, your mindset your sleep your digestion all this sort of stuff so realistically as soon as that's all kind of in play you've dropped body fat then all we have to do is move that and then move you into a gym and you're like well this is easy now that's it yeah and um just how like a lot of people do want to like their, their main goal is oh i want to lose weight quick would you say that that is achievable or do you say that it's kind of like a, a process that you have to go through I think it all depends on your starting point, of course. So I'll always, it, it all comes down to mindset as well. So I always break down my coaching into phases. So phase one is always building healthy relationships and habits. Some people have quite good healthy relationships to food, habits and things like that. So the process initially will be quite quick. Some people have food anxiety, potentially some other mental health underlying barriers. So that phase one might take longer. It all depends on you and your goal as well. Like, also, what's the rush as well? Like, if you're looking to change your life for the next 40 years, I'm like, well, six months isn't that long. Like, take your time, enjoy. Enjoy the process. Because actually, when you achieve something, it's like if you save up for a car and you actually have the car, you love it for a week, and then you're like, well, I have it now. But the years of saving up for it and then having that moment of buying it is incredible. Yeah. It's, it's the same as your body at the end of the day. Like, I think people assume, like, if you've abused your body, for example, for three years, don't expect your body to change in two weeks. It's like your body is an Amazon Prime. It won't be, it won't be delivered to you the next day. Like, 
Okay, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're speaking. You, you, I feel like you're speaking to me. <laughs> um, like specifically, like okay, I'm sorry, I've abused my body. <laughs> um, no, but no, that's really good advice because I think that people do expect results so quickly and then they give up. Um, mm because they're like, oh, well, I haven't seen anything in three weeks, so it's obviously clearly not working. Um, so it's just kind of being being that bit, a bit more patient and being realistic. <laughs> and the prime example of that is New Year's resolutions. Everyone knows that people give them up. Everyone knows they give them up in the first month. So I'm like, well, actually, like, take a step back and realize why does everyone give up in the first month? It's because they don't see results and they don't have structure leading into it. That's all it is. Yeah. Um, we we touched on it just before we came on, but obviously um, there's different workouts out there. So say, for example, um, like if I wanted to tone, um, just to kind of give this advice because I thought it was brilliant. Um, so if I wanted to tone, but then I'm kind of doing, um, you're following kind of like a HIIT workout. What what kind of workout would you would you suggest if I kind of just wanted to turn my fat into muscle? Because I'm... I'm... <laughs> it's cool. Um, so initially we just need to work out how many times a week can you realistically train with your life? So if you're very busy with work, you have kids and a family, if you say, right, I can train six times a week, you're like, mm, realistically, that's not going to happen, is it? So actually let's look at three times a week. Perfect. Three times a week is absolutely fine. Then we want to look at targeting every muscle twice a week. So the more we can target a muscle and almost attack that muscle, the more it will get developed and the more it will tone and build. So we want to target every muscle twice a week. Um, I would put everything onto, it's probably the easiest way to explain it. It's probably like a bodybuilding kind of style of workout in a sense. So we want to put as much trauma under the muscle as possible. As sexy as it sounds, we want to damage the muscle as much as possible for it to grow and be toned. So three times a week, three full body workouts. You can look at doing two exercises for your legs, maybe squats and lunges, um, three to four sets, maybe take these rep ranges up to, I know, like 12 to 15 reps, really controlled, feel the muscle the whole time, keep the tension. Then you could do push-ups. You could do some form of shoulder press, biceps, triceps, some sort of back. And you can almost mimic that exercise for the extra two to three times a week. So, and obviously, if you want to do like classes, you want to do hit stuff on the side and you enjoy that, crack on. That's absolutely fine. But just making sure you have are having time set aside for actually developing and building the muscle instead of just abusing it. Yeah, that's really good advice. I think, um, do you, uh, with these pro programs that you do, is, are there any kind of uh, specific workouts that I can find, like to focus on each, each part? <laughs> Exercises are quite personal. Obviously down okay. to, we're all quite, we're all built very differently. So I think everyone ex assumes that you need to be able to do a squat to grow your legs. So realistically, if I didn't have, when I have machinery, if I had the gym, I wouldn't do squats. Personally, because it just doesn't agree with my, my levers, all this sort of stuff. But if lunges work very well for you, stick to lunges. If any movements cause you pain or discomfort, uh, avoid them. Find an alternative movement. Making sure that you can actually connect to the movement very well, you could feel the muscles engage. That's all I would say. So there's no real, everything's very personal to you. Um, that's why a lot of like, especially out there, we're talking about social media, that's why influencers, whatever it is, they'll release a workout plan and they'll have 20,000 people do it. You're like, this isn't gonna help 20,000 people. You need to write 20,000 training programs. Yeah. So th yeah. That's, that's my opinion, that's why I personally, like I'll give workout advice and tips, what I think is a good structure, but I'll never be like, you need to do this exercise. So yeah. it's a good exercise to do. It's a very good exercise to do. Don't get me wrong, but it might not work for you. I'm uh, you're you've gone a bit blurry, Brandon. I just wanted to. I don't know if it's me or do you do you look blurry to yourself? No, I look quite blurred. I don't know if it's me. It might just be me. <laughs> I can always move. We'll see if this works. Need to get some. We'll keep it. It's it's raw and live, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I am um, just thinking whether I uh, just try and do this really quickly. Does that work? That's a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's 
Oh, we've, had a, um, we've had a question from uh, Sarah, my colleague. So I know that she um, she started to run quite a lot recently during lockdown. Um, it's I think that that's also helped with kind of mental health, kind of like getting outside, um, running it off. Um, yeah. But uh, so she said, uh, can you like can you recommend anywhere to buy a knee support specific for running? Uh, as in joint support, that like a strap that go over your knee. I'm guessing, probably yeah. stop running. Yeah. <laughs> um, probably really, stop, I would probably stop. Well, what it is like running is just an impact the whole time on the knee joint. So loads of people get like knee issues or shin splints and things like that from running. So personally, I'd take a week off running. Um, let let any inflammation go down in the joint, and just look at getting a step target in. So if you get up, I don't know, 6 a.m., go for a long hour's walk, less impact, and then think about maybe hitting 10,000 steps plus, um, and then just give your knee a little bit of a rest. Don't worry about knee support because it's, it's, it's putting a plaster over the injury. Actually, what we want to do is deal with the injury itself. That's really good advice. Thank you. Sarah's put, no! <laughs> She's right back. I don't want to stop running. Um, yeah, no, rest. Yeah, yeah make, make sure, like, you've got good shoes and stuff like that for running as well. Like, like all the basics, good shoes, um, insoles, whatever it is. Um, but, yeah, take a couple of days off, let it go down. Um, and just if, like, if you're doing, like, 5Ks and stuff like that, just power walk it like get a good pace on the power walk and try and like it'll take you a little bit longer of course but just set aside the time if you if you want to do it get up an extra half an hour earlier and make up that time yeah that's really good thank you um what diets uh sorry i know that you said everything's everything is more personal but um what diets do you because obviously the thing at the moment with obviously i know we've already touched on social media and like myths that go around but there's so many myths on diets um, yeah. It's probably the biggest subject of this. Yeah. Um, what diets do you think that is, you know, like if, it, if you're just a beginner, you just kind of want to get started out, what what would you suggest? Keep it very simple. Look at reducing any processed food in your diet. So if you take, if you're taking takeaways or you're having processed meat or something like that, eliminate that. Look at eating more vegetables, more fruits and things like that, more salads in your diet with every meal. Hydration. Are you hydrated? making sure your hydration levels are up. Um, you know, like those plates you see as a kid when you're growing up, like your vet, your protein needs to be this half of the plate, your carbs need to be that. Honestly, that works. That generally works. Yeah. It's portion control at the end of the day. So you can almost think, have two to three meals a day. Each has a protein, a carb, and a vegetable sort of thing. Um, and then one to two snacks a day. And you can almost do it. So like you'd have like a palm size of protein per day in each meal um a ha oh it's this side <laughs> a hand of like carbohydrates so rice or something like that and then vegetables and salad eat as much as you want that's it okay that's good because um would you say um like so you can't you can still eat carbs because every time i eat a carb i'm like oh my god i'm doing so bad carbs are <laughs> probably the most important nutrient besides protein um Carbs, imagine like carbs are petrol. You put petrol in your car to go, that is a carb. So when people cut out carbs and they all of a sudden wonder why, number one, they'll see results when they cut out carbs because you're eliminating 50% of your food. I'm like, yep, yeah, that's, that's why you've dropped weight because you've eliminated most of the food at your diet. So that's why the weight's dropped. But then you're gonna have to eat carbs eventually. You feel pretty crappy when you cut out all carbs. You'll get cravings, um, energy levels will drop, sex drive will drop all this sort of stuff, it'll mess with your hormones. So please eat carbs. I cannot stress it enough. It's like, have carbs, two, three meals a day, it's absolutely fine. Just make sure you're not eating too much of them. Thank you. <laughs> I've saved my life. <laughs> I'm like, shouldn't be eating you, but it's okay. Yeah, that's good, that's really good. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this, Brandon. You've shed a lot of light. <laughs> um and people can contact you um and have like phone consultations can't they yeah so at the, i prefer zoom um like this i get to see people's emotions and things like that um and get to just more of a connection really it's a, just a nicer approach so yeah um if anyone has any questions they can literally go onto my website or they can just i'm easy to find on the internet i think so <laughs> 
Yeah, it's literally his name. It's brilliant. There's, there's nothing yeah. else. It's, it's brandonhepburn.com. And then yeah. it's at Brandon Hepburn. So yeah. um, really, really easy. Um, and you can tell that he's got a wealth of knowledge. He's not going to fill your mind with all these different kind of myths. He's just going to kind of give it to you straight as it is. Um, and I think everybody wants a simple life, but wants results. So I think that it's yeah. a really good direction. No, no, no. Um, I, I also want to point out, obviously, please do visit his website because there's blogs. Um, he's uh, Brandon has recently kind of um, put lots of blogs up during lockdown and before uh, just to give you kind of more advice. That's how you can kind of get in touch with him. But you can also see previous um, clients that he's worked with um, and testimonials. Um, so it just kind of is brilliant. Really good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It was nice. It's good. Um, I'm sure because obviously our location of our offices, I'm sure that you'll um, you'll see some of us coming to you in gym box as well, which is because uh, it's uh, on a on a street that we rent those properties. So uh, okay, where where are, where is your office again? Um, so we're on Broadwick Street in Soho, um, oh, yeah. and and also on Judd Street in Bloomsbury. So yeah, uh, yeah quite centrally located. Yeah, I'll see you running around for sure. I'll see you in the gym. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully we can meet in person soon rather than virtually. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it won't be long. Hopefully it won't be long. Fingers cool. crossed. But no, Thanks so much, though. You really helped. Um, yeah. Someone else has written on there really great tips. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's been really useful. Um, so yes, if you're if you're looking to lose weight in the next couple of weeks, um, well, you know, to get started um, on fitness within the next few weeks before the end of lockdown, um, then there's your chance. You know, you can still you can still get in get involved, um, get in touch, download his e guides, look at his programs, and get started. Perfect. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. It was lovely to speak with you. Sorry for um, like the interruption where I cut you off all the time. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Just don't know when. Stop. Um, <laughs> I really loved it. Enjoy the weather, everyone, um, because it's absolutely glorious outside at the moment. Um, and uh, we hope to see you all soon. Um, I'm back next week, just to let everyone know, um, just because estate agents have opened again now, um, I am living two different lives. Um, so I'm not gonna be on tomorrow, um, but I'm gonna be back next week. Cool, thank cool. you so much. No worries, <laughs> have a good one, see ya.